So uh, we want to talk a little bit more about this positive in the present the Sean Acor video that we just saw. Mr. Thompson and I had the opportunity this summer of going to Chicago and presenting to a national conference and lots of people were, ex were way, way excited about it. And so we need to do a better job of selling it to you. So I've asked Mr. Thompson to share a little bit about the science behind it and why it really works. So take it over, Mr. T. All right. So you guys just saw Sean Acor was really exciting. He talked about Amy the Unicorn and Bobo, his brother-in-law and all the other things. And he talks about these five things we're supposed to be doing. And here at Sam Hills, we're going to do those five things. And Mr. Peer will tell you more about that, I'm sure. But sometimes my students have felt like this is kind of cheesy. Like I'm supposed to write down the things I feel good about and why I'm happy I'm here and the positive things that happened in my life. And they feel like it's a little bit like juvenile, a little childish or whatever. And I'm here to say as a psychology teacher who is really into this kind of stuff, this is cutting edge science. Like this is the newest stuff out there in the field of psychology. And in fact, 20 years from now, when your kids, I, I know you, you're gonna have kids in high school by then, your kids are gonna be doing this stuff. No matter where they go to school, whether it's the Salem Hills or someplace else around the country, this is the stuff 20 years from now that will be part of the school curriculum no matter where you go to school. It's amazing cutting edge stuff. And here's the research behind it. So this whole idea, there's, there's something called the bader meinhof phenomenon. I like to call it the red car phenomenon. My students in psych will talk more about this. But the idea is, when I go, when I'm driving around and I'm trying to decide, maybe I want to buy a new car, I'm trying to decide what kind of car I want. I want something flashy, I want something that stands out, something different. So I go to the, the car dealership and I said, I want a bright red sports car. That's what I want, I want a sports car. I want it to be bright red so I'm bold and different. There's not very many red sports cars. So I go buy it, I pull it off the lot and all of a sudden I realize there are red cars everywhere. So I, it's not that different. It's it's. They're all over the place. And all of a sudden I'm noticing, oh, you know, there's a red car, and there's a red car, and there's a red car. So this bader meinhof effect is a phenomenon, is the idea that once my brain decides that something's important in my life, it's really good at noticing other examples of that throughout the day. So if I've got a red car, now all of a sudden I notice red cars everywhere. If I have a minivan, I notice minivans everywhere I go. So the same phenomenon works when it comes to pause in the present. If every morning I start the day by saying, okay, brain, Think about three things you're grateful for. Think about something that's happened in the last 24 hours that's amazing, something that's good that's happened in my life, something that for you know, for in the last 24 hours was good in my life. Then my, I'm, I'm gonna struggle with it maybe, I have to think about it for a few minutes, but I'm gonna write it down. And the next day I'm gonna do it again, and the next day I'm gonna do it again. Over the course of three weeks, 21 days is all it takes, over the course of these 21 days, our brain says, oh, you're serious about this. Oh, you wanna notice these things. They're all over the place, but we just haven't been paying attention to them. So your brain starts to pay attention, starts to grab those throughout the day. So it's not like in the morning, in first period, you have to think back over it. It becomes easier and your brain starts to recognize those in the moment and logs them away in your brain and hangs on to them for tomorrow morning. So what that does is I go throughout my day now all of a sudden instead of noticing all the crap going on in my life, I notice the positive things because of this bader meinhof phenomenon. That my brain says this is what I want. I want to notice the positives. And so even when crap happens, even when bad days happen, even when you know, my whole life is crumbling apart. My brain still says, look for the positives, look for the positives. It's amazing cutting edge research, this idea of how that can be applied to who we are and how we interpret the world. Some interesting research that Acor talks about in one of his other talks, uh, one of his other messages. He talks about the fact that happiness is only 10% based on external events. In other words, what happens to us. Only 10% of our long-term happiness is based on what happens in our life. The other 90% is how we interpret those events, what our brain does with that experience. So even if it's horrible news, even if something going on at home, even if something that happens with my, my girlfriend, even if it's something that whatever, it doesn't matter, only 10% of how much happiness I find is based on the events. And the other 90% is what I do with that, how my, my brain interprets that and views my external world. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to harness that 90%. We can't change the 10%. Some of you guys are going through stuff I can't even comprehend in your life. And that's Unfortunate. we're here to help you and support you through that, but we can do something about the other 90% of your long-term happiness. We can change the way we see the world despite the crap happening by just focusing on the good things in our life. It's amazing, it's amazing cutting edge research. The second part about this that's amazing is that when we do something happy, or when we do something good, when we feel happiness, we have this flood of dopamine, right? Some of you guys have heard of dopamine, it's a chemical in your brain, whatever. It's a neurotransmitter. We know it's involved with happiness. Everybody thinks dopamine's happy, makes us happy. That's true. The other thing that's amazing about dopamine, though, is it actually turns on all of our learning centers in our brain. So as I'm sitting there in the morning, first thing in the morning, I'm writing down things I'm grateful for, I get this flood of dopamine that is released from my brain, floods my entire system, so I feel happy. So first period, you're gonna feel a little better about being there at 7.50 in the morning on a Tuesday in the middle of January. 
That's the first part. But the other thing, it turns on all these learning centers. So for the rest of the day, you've had this flood of dopamine that triggers your brain and says, hey, we're gonna learn. And the reason why it does that is because your brain says, I like this, I like this feeling, I like having this flood of dopamine, so let's pay attention to what's going on and let's learn from this experience. So now so we start our day with dopamine, a flood of dopamine, and we're better students. We're able to pay attention a little better, we're able to remember what we studied last night, if you studied, whatever, it's gonna make us more successful. There's, there's amazing research, Mr. Peary and I have rambled on, like 39% more likely to live to 94 years old. People who do this, you're gonna live longer because you find happiness, you find optimism in your life. What else you wanna add? Um, I think we need to talk about that it's 31, you're 31% more productive when you do this and your creativity triples and there's this all sorts of great data that says that this is important stuff. So here's what I would like you to do. Um, we're going to hand out our student handbooks tomorrow and in those student handbooks I would like you to take the opportunity to do five things and it's the same five things that Sean Aker talks about. I want you to write down three things that you're grateful for. Um, just think back and and I've done this every day since February 13th of 2014, so I, I, I used to write down like bacon and cool stuff like that. Now it's more of activities, um, you know, I, I wrote down in my journal yesterday about how the first day of school went and all of this good stuff and, and so it's just fun, fun stuff. So write down three things that you're grateful for, um, write down one positive experience from the last 24 hours. It's just, you just stop and think and what, what happened, what went well, um, and, and write that down. There's something about writing it down that, that makes it connect to your brain. Right. Um, then we encourage you to exercise and to meditate. Next week we're going to talk about mindfulness a little bit during our One of Us week. And then the last thing is to do a conscientious act of kindness. And, and we've, we've, we're changing that a little bit because in the, in the past we've called it a random act of kindness and, and students will open the door for somebody and, and that's, that's, a, that's a nice thing. But really what I want is a conscientious act of kindness. Think about something that you can do to help somebody else and then do it. And um, you'll really find that if you do that, um, it's a real blessing. One of the things that we like to do when we did our presentation is we just had everybody get out their phone and, and text someone and thank them for, for making a difference in their lives. And the fun thing about that is that you do it and then you get a, a text back thanking you so it's a double dip. You get the dopamine from you sending it and then you get the dopamine from the, the person sending it back. So um, this is a wonderful thing. We want you to know that it really does change lives. We, we interviewed several students, lots of students when we went before we went back to Chicago and we got their their comments on it and it does it does make people's lives better and so just take a minute do it and um, it, it will it will change your lives anything else whether you think you need it or not do it stick with it it's gonna be it's gonna be gradual change over time you're not gonna one day wake up and be like hey, I'm, I'm better it's gonna be a gradual thing over time teachers let the students do it that five first five minutes of class every day first five minutes is your time to do this journaling let's do it let's change the world it's awesome. So I would add this to the, the people who need it the most are the ones who are the most hesitant to do it. So if you don't think you need it, do it. It really will change your life. So from here on out, this is how we're going to change the world. This is part of our striving for excellence. This will help us in all that we do. So thank you and go Skyhawks.